Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. Lovely to see uh, see faces and see folks um, here in the Zoom room and also extending our welcome to you to unseen folks that are practicing with us at uh, other times on the YouTube channel. Ah. So today, um, there was a lot of this afternoon, really, the morning. I had lots of energy and taught this morning and had another student and lots of stuff. And then in the afternoon, I kind of crashed and I was so tired. I even tried to nap, which is like not a thing this body does. And uh, it didn't work. But um, yeah, I was just super tired and wasn't any clarity. And I was like, nah, this will just be one of those nights of just showing up, which is a beautiful thing for us all to do when we're practicing or developing meditation, just show up or just sit down, just begin. Um, and just in that um, letting go, just, oh, well, <laughs> this is, these are the conditions. That's how it is. I, there's no point grinding away, trying to make something when it's, when there's a fog, uh, but there was something in that surrendering uh, that reminded me and nature, thank you, nature, for always reminding us of letting go. And uh, just the other day, I was out, out front and um, it wasn't even windy. It, it wasn't cold it wasn't windy but there was a sound like a quite a quite a cascade it sounded like water flowing almost so it wasn't near any flowing water but I was like oh what's that and right beside me was this just like it was unusual like a, a whole, the whole tree let go <laughs> like all the leaves just psh, let go it wasn't like a few leaves floating down. It actually like made a sound of the. Uh, it was so beautiful and awe, uh, awe inspiring, and mm, yeah, it was really beautiful. Is the only word that's coming, and uh, I love how. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm wearing this today, too, which is a local artist that makes this from leaves just in the sun and also rust, like it's just got leaves laid on the fabric and then she dyes them in the in the sun. But so oh, I'm wearing lots of leaves as well. But how well, I'll put a link to her work now that I've said that. Um reminded of the the wisdom the teaching of how they just let go the leaves letting go happens and how you know mm, <laughs> when we're struggling with something sometimes somebody maybe with good intentions might say to us or has Maybe we've said it to people, you know, why don't you just let it go? <laughs> Please don't say that. Just just let it go, you know? Like, is, is that helpful? <laughs> it's not. It, it, so the, the action is not in the just let go. It's to see where and how we are holding on. This is the part that we do. Nature is already letting go. Nature is of the nature to be arising and passing and flowing and letting go all the time in subtle, infinite, myriad ways. Letting go is actually the absence of clinging. And letting go happens when we see where and how we are clinging holding on to a story of how things should be, how I should be, especially how they should be, 
how the world should be, etc., how we want things to be, and how we don't want them to be. These are how we get involved in clinging and freedom, freedom of heart, mind, peace, liberation is characterized by an absence of clinging. We know from the four noble truths that the Buddha awoke to that the cause of what's referred to as dukkha, that's D-U-K-K-H-A in the Pali language, that dukkha has a cause. Dukkha means suffering, stress, not being able to get rid of what we don't want, not being able to keep what we do want, aging, sickness, and death. These are all parts of the human experience of this worldly experience. And the Buddha didn't say that all of life is suffering, but part of life is characterized by these things that are beyond our control. And uh, so this dukkha, I'm using the Pali word because it, it doesn't translate easily into one word. Suffering is just one aspect of dukkha. Dukkha is caused by clinging. And so the ending of dukkha, the the um, which is possible for us, has a whole eightfold path, a whole way, but in its characteristic is the absence of clinging. There is no clinging. And so to really see that letting go is nature. It, the trees don't have to try to let go. It, it, it is just, it just happens at, through actually, <laughs> I, I nerded out a little bit this afternoon, not enough to be able to say this in a really accurate, scientifically minded way. But apparently, leaves let go because there's a, the changes in the light and the temperature uh, cause a hormone to be released, which causes strain at the, it's called the abscission layer. Um, the bond between the leaf and the branch begin to weaken from this hormone that's released. And um, it's kind of, it's a bit of a stretch of an analogy, but it reminded me of how dukkha is actually often referred to as a gateway to freedom. So we often think like this, this stress and dukkha is a problem that we need to get rid of. And what is often the case, very often, you might explore that in your own awareness and practice, and certainly meditation, that letting go happens when we see and feel and deeply know the pain of dukkha. The pain of holding on, when we turn towards it, when we see the irritation, when we see the stress and, and the ruminating and the tension and the pain in the body and the mind and the heart from the ways we're holding on to our ideas and our uh, identities and our preferences and our stories and etc., when we actually let ourselves feel that and turn towards the holding on part, 
then letting go can happen. So actually turning towards, mm, to allow ourselves to feel the tension, the stress, the in, in the body, heart, mind, is liberating, gives us the opportunity to let go of wanting things to be other than how they are. And this doesn't mean that we, you know, remove ourselves to a mountaintop or we just shrug off everything eternally. Yeah, it is what it is. Let things, you know, things are how they are. All of the Dharma is underpinned by our precepts, by our ethics of wise action, wise speech, non-harm, not causing harm with our words or and and being falsely, not taking more than is freely given, etc. So being with how things are doesn't mean, you know, just letting abuse happen, letting violence happen, etc. Or being a part of that, or yeah, all the forms that can take. When I was on my very first meditation retreat, a 10-day retreat, uh, not having any idea what I was in for, <laughs> thankfully, because I wouldn't have gone. Um, because of the container of the retreat and my commitment to myself to let's do this thing. It's only 10 days. We just do this thing. See what it's about. Um And the form, there was no, all the escape hatches were, are not there. The TV, the phone, alcohol, call a friend, bitch at somebody, go for a long run. Not that I run, heavens, but um, some people do. And, you know, all the ways that we release stress and tension, all the ways are not there. You're asked to just be and meet how things are. And it was so dreadful. Oh my gosh, so much pain. <laughs> so much pain from sitting so long, so many times, many long, long day. And they start very early, and uh, there's a lot of rules and restrictions at, at this particular form of retreat. And uh, hmm, it uh, really got, like, around the middle of the retreat, like, so terrible. Time was so slow and painful. And it was like this long, they call sitting of determination, strong determination, hour and a half sit. And you're already in excruciating pain before you even start. Not you, I. And um, by the time that bell rang at the end, it was just brutal. Um, I just broke down with relief. And then soon arose <laughs> so much anger, like, whoa, oceans. But because there wasn't any way to vent, to release it, to do all the distraction things, it just grew. And the mind just kept pouring kerosene on it, like, oh, yeah. You're right, this place is, and they are, and we're going to take it down. Like, it just went crazy. Like, really? Um, and because of the container, the mind just uh, went as far, like, 
really as far as it could go without actually acting out like it imagined all the worst things all of it and it's what i would call hell realms which in the dharma um is something that's referred to and it uh and it was because I couldn't just escape and vent, distract, whatever, from all that that I had created. Uh, that the bubble broke. It was like a spotlight in the deepest, darkest cave. And the thought arose, you created all that. I, I created all that. They just said, sit down and be quiet. Pay attention to your breath. And I created like hell realms. And it was because, because of the container of the retreat, it was turning towards that dukkha, like fully dukkha, that the letting go happened. I didn't try to let go. I didn't like, oh, you shouldn't think those things and you need to stop. And I didn't try to control it. It just went as far as it could go. Could not go any further without starting to act out. And which, well, I have enough control to not do that. But uh, so there's... there. I'm trying to describe how letting go happens when we really see the pain of the dukkha of holding on. All of the thoughts and stories and images I created was me trying to control everything and how it should be and how it shouldn't be and what's wrong and who's wrong and et cetera, et cetera. It was all holding on, not wanting things to be how they were. It was like this. I decided to stay. So, and then, yeah, ever since then, I've been following this path deeply and um, et cetera. And uh, now I sit three month retreats instead of 10 days. <laughs> so <clears throat> when I can. So to understand that dukkha is a gateway to freedom. To turn towards what is painful and see where am I holding on? What am I holding on to? What am I trying to push away? What am I trying to control? Because it, the bell already rang like hours ago. And I was holding it and holding it and holding it. It's like there's a story of a a monk that two monks walking along a river and there's a female that's wanting to get to the, oh, they're crossing the river. She needs help getting across. And one of the monks picks her up and carries her across the river and um, put her down on the other side and they carried on their way and they're not supposed to be touching females and so the you know some time down the road the two monks the one monk says why did you do that why did you carry that woman and and he said oh i put her down hours ago you're still carrying her <laughs> it was like that they rang the bell hours ago and i just carried it and carried it and just room blew it up into this massive, painful, painful thing. Horribly painful. I don't know. I hope this makes sense. It's hard to, it's hard to summarize something like this, but uh, so letting go is the absence of clinging. And it's by turning towards clinging and seeing what am I holding on to? It's, which is the same as pushing away, right? Holding on to or pushing away. We're still all up in something, trying to control things. Um, 
And when you turn towards it, then there's awareness is seeing, knowing, and there's a choice. I could keep doing that. But why would you when you see the pain it's causing you? Some letting go happen, or a lot. Mm -hmm. This is a poem from a, I think I read that, oh, is she a Franciscan sister? Do they have nuns? She's a nun in some order, but I can't recall right now. Um, Macrina Wider Care, Wider Care, W I E D E R K E H R. Um, I'll put the link to this poem below. It's called The Sacrament of Letting Go. And she's using a, she pronouns here. Um, I'm going to change it to they. Apologies, uh, Macrina. Slowly, they celebrated the sacrament of letting go. First, they surrendered their green, then the orange, yellow, and red. Finally, they let go of their own brown. Shedding their last leaf, they stood empty and silent stripped bare. Leaning against the winter sky, they began their vigil of trust. Shedding their last leaf, they watched it journey to the ground. They stood in silence, wearing the colors of emptiness, their branches wondering, how do you give shade with so much gone? And then, the sacrament of waiting began. The sunrise and the sunset watched with tenderness, clothing their silhouettes that kept their hope alive. They helped her to help them to understand that their vulner vulnerability, their dependence and need, their emptiness, their readiness to receive we're giving them a new kind of beauty. Every morning and every evening, they stood in silence and celebrated together the sacrament of waiting. And this, this part, um, understanding our vulnerability, our dependence and need, uh, reminded me of something from a group that we had this morning uh, on the five invitations um, by Frank Ostaseski. And uh, here he says something similar. It's this helplessness, while well, he's talking about control, um, taking ourselves too seriously is the cause of much suffering, Dukkha. We tell ourselves that we are in charge buckle up, get this done, when in reality we are quite helpless, subject to the events taking place around us. But that helplessness brings us into contact with our vulnerability, which can be a doorway to awakening, to a deeper intimacy with reality. So similar threads there with that vulnerability, um, turning towards, you know, what we, what's, what's tender, what, what are we trying to control, what is beyond our control, and uh, really turning towards the stress it's causing us, the pain, and when, when that is known, some letting go can happen. Letting go is nature. And when something is 
when we're solidifying around something, that reminds me of uh, Tara Brock describes, I think was she talking about duck or something. No, talking about the self, like an ice cube, how we create this permanent and separate self and or whatever we're contracting around, trying to solidify around and how the sun is like the light of awareness and how it helps dissolve this holding on, this clinging around who I am and how I want things to be. Okay, I think I'm rambling now. Mm -hmm. So we're so blessed to have, I mean, it's just, it's all around us all the time. Nature, get outside if you can, if you're blessed with the ability to be outside or at least be out a window. There's so much teaching available to us there. And this breath is a constant, beautiful way to practice attending to what is already nature, arising, passing, every exhalation. You know, how long can people hold their breath? I should have Googled it. But, you know, for a limited amount of time. <laughs> it, letting go with each breath, it just is happening. And then in-breath happens. We come into this world on an inhalation and we leave it on an exhalation. Every breath is an opportunity to practice being with nature. Letting go is happening. Letting go is happening. So let's do that. So um, let's get ready to have a practice. Let's have a drink of water. There's another beautiful image of letting go is a, a hourglass. I keep this nearby and just everything's constantly flowing and letting go. It is nature. Okay. Mm. So adjusting your posture or your lighting or finding any supports that you need for this practice of awakening, this practice of awakening to how things are. See if you need any other movements or adjustments, stretch or touch. So that you're not just forcing yourself into stillness, but that stillness arrives naturally and with a sense of welcome. And then find a posture for the eyes that feels supportive for your practice at this time of day. For some, it's helpful to have the eyes open a little bit, bringing in some light if there's sleepiness. For others, it's helpful to let the eyes rest closed to remove or let go of distractions. And then we'll begin to attend to the tensions in the body and the muscles that are holding us up away from the ground. And feel that as these are 
turned towards and felt there's that little space where we could choose to keep that tension or for it to be of its nature and to let go. So we want to first know, turn towards what's here. So we'll begin with the muscles of the face. Cross the forehead in between the brow. Is there any holding in the muscles of the mouth or jaw that isn't needed right now or that could soften to some degree? Feeling around the flesh and the skin of the whole skull, back of the head. And down the neck, back and sides of the neck. Feeling if there's any contraction or holding in these muscles that isn't needed or could release a little bit. So these muscles lengthen and the shoulders drop a little further down, not by pulling, but by letting go happening. And perhaps a few slightly deeper breaths, feeling if there's any holding or contraction in the areas of the heart center or the belly center. So the whole body begins to feel heavier, but still upright. Just letting the bones hold us in uprightness and letting go of any muscular tension that's not needed. Feeling the contact of the body with the ground, with the support that you're on. Feeling the rootedness, that's the image of the trees. Rooted and upright. Steady and centered and flexible. And then beginning to turn towards these inner winds of our breath. At first, just feeling the sensation of breathing in and breathing out that's naturally happening without our control or us doing or making it happen. Breathing is happening. Body knows how to breathe. We breathe in what trees breathe out and the trees breathe in what we breathe out.
Some people feel more tension when they pay attention to the breath. If that's the case for you, you might just feel it in a very spacious way, like a tree, like there's space as there is all around you, a sphere of awareness, and breathing is happening in that spacious way. And some people find it calming and centering to attend to the breath in a really one-pointed way. One place in the body where the attention settles and a rising and passing is known at that one-pointed place. So you can practice in either one of these ways now spaciously or one-pointed attention. Arising, passing. And just for the remainder of this period of time, feel what it feels like as a sensation in the body to not hold on to wanting anything to be other than how it is right now. Nothing to push away, nothing to hold on to, No one to become. Just nature breathing. When thoughts arise, as they will, see that there's nothing to hold on to. Just let thoughts arise and pass the way breath does. And if we notice there has been some holding on, just feel that effect that contraction, that solidifying around something. When that's known, letting go can happen.
Freedom is an absence of controlling, pushing, or holding. An absence of clinging. Breath and sounds, sensations and thoughts, all being of their nature arising and passing. And when we notice any solidifying or contracting, we turn towards it. With the light of curiosity. Shedding our last leaves, watching them float to the ground. We stand in silence, wearing the colors of emptiness.
Emptiness has the quality of boundless care, boundless awareness. Boundless equanimity. Noticing when any tension or contraction has come into the body, the heart, the mind, the nervous system, and turn towards it. What's being pushed away or held on to? And when that's known in the light of awareness, perhaps some letting go happens. These last few minutes get curious about the subtler layers of contraction, perhaps deep in the back of the belly, deeper in the layers of the shoulders or the jaw. Where is it for you? Nothing to try to get rid of, but just turning curiosity, the light of awareness towards.
Mm. Well, thank you for your presence and your practice and your curiosity. And uh, thank you to the leaves and the trees and the breath. All right, I'm, uh, I think, let me just look. I think I'm here two more weeks, next week, and the one after. Yeah, two more weeks. And then I'm away for a few weeks, but I have guest teachers for all of those times, which I'm so happy about. So uh, if you're able, I'll see you next time. If I'm here, who knows? 